to have gap budgeting, get to structural balance, have an independent fiscal monitor that would simply tell the world, the political and governmental universe, whether the budget was balanced or not. And I said, if there, if you borrow, then a way of enforcing the obligations to go to a balanced budget was by having confidence in the borrowing resolution uh, that would create uh, uh, an enormous pressure in and of itself to have the governor and the legislature comply with the requirements for balanced budget. But unfortunately, uh, the, there has not been a, a debate about the merits of that plan, and maybe people have better ideas, and I'm sorry that it wasn't treated seriously enough to have a debate. I thought it was the best idea I could come up with, but maybe I was wrong. Did you uh, now? I that don't think so, but <laughs> no, you don't think you were wrong. Uh, now, no. now that you uh, that the budget appears to be sort of limping towards the finish line, more or less. What are you right. going to be doing for the next seven months until your tenure is complete? Well, we're, I'm working very hard on a series of reports that I will obviously share with the governor and the legislature on Medicaid, on infrastructure in the state, on education, and on uh, some ideas for reform. Uh, because I, I've had an extraordinarily interesting learning curve uh, this last year, and I have some wonderful people working for me who have, have shared that learning curve. I have access to all kinds of people in the government and academics outside the government who are filled with ideas. and, and uh, so we'll be presenting uh, some reports during the fall in the hopes that it helps uh, the state make the governance decisions that they have to make uh, next year. Any idea what you'll do in January? Uh, uh, yes, I, I think uh, I'm going to continue to pursue the interest that I have in the whole question of the relationship between the federal government and states. I think the problem that afflicts New York, afflicts most states in this country, as I've said before, I think it's a very, very serious problem. It's growing exponentially. Uh, it threatens the level of services uh, that the public has come to expect. It has enormous implications for health care and public education. Uh, so I intend to pursue that in, in one form or another, probably with some kind of academic affiliation. And I also uh, hope that perhaps I could teach. I've done that before. I taught public finance at Columbia Law School for three years. I've taught at the Kennedy School. And uh, whatever the value of all this experience I've had over the last 35 years, uh, I can't think of anything more useful to do than try to share it for what it's worth with uh, the next generation. Well, I want to thank you very much for sharing some time with us this evening. Thanks, Lieutenant Governor Richard Ravage. Thank you.